guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I am the big, hairy, ugly dude, and guess what? It's Q&A Saturday. I got six questions for this video. I'm gonna do a Q&A video today, and I'm gonna do six more Q&A questions tomorrow, and then, can you see me with this on? I look kinda dark. Now we'll get back to normal videos on Monday. Look at those trap games, look at those trap games. Boy, my legs are sore. Been a good week of training. Guys, I got six questions in this video. If you want your question answered by the big, hairy, ugly dude, you can find my Q&A link below. Come on over, post your questions. I answer every question posted in that Q&A link, in that Q&A thread. And the best questions I take and turn it into a Q&A video just like this. So, if I sound a little sniffly, or if you notice the bags under my eyes, Sinuses allergies are kicking my butt here in Ohio, but I still have trap gains, kids. I still have trap gains because I am the big hairy ugly dude. <laughs> Sinuses. All right, that's that's a skill. That's that, I think that was a D flat, wasn't it? All right, first question, guys. Let's get into the questions here. First question is from Mac B. Mac B says, Steve, I've been lifting consistently for ten uh, months. Six months, he's been following the Massive Iron Plan and making good progress. Excellent, that's what I like to hear. But I struggle with my nutrition. When I try to build muscle, I'm quickly losing track of things and start to overeat. When I'm in a calorie deficit, my progress obviously slows down and it's messing with my head. I feel best when I'm at maintenance calories. Progress is slower, but I don't suffer negative effects of restriction overeating. I'm following your three-day full body plan, etc. Do you think it's a good idea to stay in calorie balance for prolonged periods of time and hit the gym hard or should I focus on cutting or bulking? I'm not a big fan of the cutting and bulking and cutting and bulking cycles. You need to do, Mac, what is working best for you. Now, what I would do if you're going to stay in that maintenance level, and I probably recommend staying in that so you avoid binge eating, avoiding fat, avoid fat gains, etc. But what I want you to do is I want you to get scientific. I want you to get a tape measure and measure your bicepticons, your chest, um, your quads and your calves, and your waist right around the belly button just to make sure you're not gaining fat. I just want you to measure that once a month to monitor progress. If, if you're not seeing progress over the course of three or four or five months, if you're not seeing gains in those bicepticons or your chest or whatever, you might need to take it from maintenance level and bring it up 300 calories. That's not binge eating, that's just a good, clean, lean, long-term bulk. If you find yourself a binge eater, if you find yourself having binge eating tendencies, I would recommend tightening up your diet as much as possible, meaning probably going to 90% clean whole foods and maybe allowing 10% junk calories per week. The problem most binge eaters face is that it's not that they're it's not the binge eating that's necessarily the problem, although that is bad. I tend to be a binge eater myself when I'm stressed. My problem is when I binge eat, I eat crap like Doritos, like ice cream, Pop-Tarts, stuff like that. So if you do binge eat, I want you to focus on clean whole foods. Look, a bag of Doritos has 1,700 calories. If you're like the big, hairy, ugly dude, you can probably knock that out in 30 minutes. But a potato has, what, 110 calories? Try eating 16 potatoes. It just is impossible. It's a lot harder to get in that many calories when you're eating whole, nutritious food. So I would recommend staying at maintenance level. If you're not building size, you need to bump it up 300 calories. But what you really need to be concerned with, what you really need to focus on, is eating mostly clean, whole food. So if you do binge eat, you're not overeating calories. So Mac, I hope that helped. Next question is from Schmeeks. Whoa, 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 whoa. There, you get a free light show with the big hairy ugly dude. Uh, Schmeeks says, my question is about workout order. Uh, in regards to full body workouts, do you believe that there is a true belief in regards to what 
you should work out first. So Schmiegs is basically asking, do I believe that there is a specific exercise order that must be followed when it comes to full body workouts? He says, I get the idea of doing bigger lifts first, but do squats or other compound leg exercises have to be done prior to chest and back? No, no. Look, all the big programs have squats first. That's cool. I understand it. Squats are the most taxing exercise. But with that said, when I run full body workouts, when the big, hairy, ugly dude, that's me, kids, the big, hairy, ugly dude, when I run full body workouts, a lot of times when I lead with squats, I am done. I love to squat. I give it all to squats. I leave it on the table with squats. And a lot of times when I'm done with squats, you know what I want to do? I want to head upstairs and eat that post-workout meal because I'm hungry. So taking a page from the book of Steve Reeves, he recommended in his book, literally, that you could do squats at the end of your program. This is a viable option. Don't let anybody tell you, you can't do that. Rules are made to be broken. As long as your form is good, as long as you're getting through those sets with quality form and they're safe and you're progressing, it's okay. I have no issue with you doing chest, back, shoulders, um, isolation work, and then rounding out your workout with, with uh, squats or big compound leg exercises because... When you're done, you can just walk off and eat that post-workout meal. Sometimes I'll do chest, back, shoulders, then squats, and then do the isolation work. For those of you guys that find squats too taxing, perfectly fine, perfectly fine to insert them later in your workout. So Schmiegs, I hope that helped. Next question is from Captain America, Steve Rogers. Yes, he does. He follows a big, hairy, ugly dude, as do all the other Avengers. I actually train Tony Stark, kids. I train Tony Stark. Thor? No, I don't train him. Steve Rogers says, Hey, Steve, I was wondering how I could work power cleans into my workout schedule, and are they worth it? Yeah, power cleans are a great choice. I like Olympic lift variations. The problem with me, and you don't see me doing a lot of these variations, is that um, as an older lifter, when I was younger, we didn't know much about the Olympic lifts. They weren't talked about in the Weeder magazines, Flex and Muscle and Fitness and that type of thing. So I simply didn't do them. I didn't know they existed, so to speak. Olympic lifting wasn't on my radar for hypertrophy, hypertrophy. I won the hypertrophy. Okay, so um, Olympic lifts, are they a good idea? Yeah, um, I did... Uh, I did uh, some variations when I was training for the deadlift. I would do like a power pull up to about waist level. Basically, it was mimicking the, power, mimicking the power clean, but just I was trying to get it up to about my belly button. So power cleans are a good idea, okay? When you're gonna do power cleans, I would, they're, they're a very technical uh, exercise. I would lead off with them in your program. Whenever you're doing very technical exercises, I would do them when you're most fresh. So if it's on a full body, I would lead with them. Now, if you're doing an upper lower program and you're doing, say, deadlifts one day, I would do power cleans. You're doing deadlifts and squats on those lower body days on an upper lower uh, split. So you have one day where you're doing like uh, deadlifts and squats, and then the next day you can do like power cleans and leg press. That is how I would probably do it, or better yet, I would do... Um, you know, like uh, like like squats and power or power cleans and squats. Look, I'd probably do squats before power cleans because um, that's just the way the big hug, hugly, 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 big hairy, ugly dude would roll. But I would probably do like squats and power cleans and then deadlifts and leg press. That's that's a good option as well. Whatever works for you, it really doesn't matter. That both of them, those are good options. If you're doing a bro split back workout and you want to do power cleans, I would insert power cleans on back day. I would probably either lead with them or do your heavy deadlifts first 
and then do some power shrug or power cleans after your heavy, heavy, heavily, heavily. I'm having a problem speaking today. After your heavy deadlifts, so I would do like a five by two or five by three. Don't go too heavy. Stick with the lower reps per set. Just get the feel for the exercise and progress in weight when it makes sense. But yeah, they're a great exercise for that back, for those traps. Thumbs up from the big hairy ugly dude. All right, guys. Um, next question is from Eric S. Three more questions in this video. Eric S. says, most of your programs call for benching before doing rows. Any particular reason? Yes, Eric, absolutely. Um, when you are doing a upper lower split or when you are doing a full body workout and you see me do bench press first and then a back exercise and then a shoulder exercise. Um, why do I do that? Well, on, upper, on days when you're training the entire upper body, you have a lot of movements which are press focused. They involve your tricepticons, your shoulders, etc. So I like to do bench, back, shoulders. I like to do chest, back, shoulders for a reason because you have two pressing movements in that workout. So you could do chest, shoulders, back, but then you're doing back to back pressing movements. I prefer to split them up. I prefer to put a back exercise right in between two pressing movements so it gives you time for your triceps and your shoulders to get a little recovery um, while you're doing a, while you're doing your back work. So you can do chest, back, shoulders. If you wanted to, you could come back the other upper lower day or the other full body workout day and do shoulders, back, chest. But yeah, I want you to do a back, or a back exercise in between chest and shoulders, in between pressing movements, just so you allow for a little bit of recovery time. You'll come back more fresh when you have to hit a shoulder pressing exercise or a chest pressing exercise. So I hope that helped. All right, next question is from Frodo. Not only do I train Steve Rogers, the cast of the Lord of the Rings, they come to the big hairy ugly dude as well. Frodo says... Steve, we all know about the aesthetics crew. Okay, we all know about the aesthetics crew. But I never hear anybody talk about big naturals. Richard Gazdecki holds a number of natural bodybuilding titles worldwide and also some impressive powerlifting meet wins. Is it really possible he is big and lean naturally? I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. What I can tell you without knowing who Richard Gazdecki is, is that in my experience, and we're going to have some real talk here, in my experience, a lot of people tell you they're natural. A lot of people tell you they're natural. Why do they do that? They do it because um, steroids are illegal. Some guys do it because they want to make themselves look superhuman compared to the rest of you. The big hairy ugly dude prefers not to talk about natural, non-natural lifters. I just love lifting. I don't care if someone is natural, if someone is non-natural, if someone is on TRT. My passion's about lifting, not about what they're doing. So with that said, when it comes to judging a natural, there's some things you need to remember. There's some things you need to remember. If a guy looks too big to be true, he probably isn't natural. If he looks too strong to be true, he probably isn't natural. There are exceptions to every rule. Johnny Candito, Johnny Candito. Johnny Candito, he is a deadlifting freak. And if you look at him in his videos, and this is no, no rip on Johnny, no rip on Johnny, but if you look at him, if you look at his, his upper body compared to the big hairy ugly dude, you would say, Oh, the big hairy ugly dude can outlift, out deadlift Johnny Candito by, by leaps and bounds. But the truth is, at age 47 and at 250 plus pounds, um, at this weight, Johnny Candido can out deadlift me. I could deadlift close to 800 pounds when I was 346 pounds. So there are freaks out there like Johnny Candido. But um, you have to use your own judgment when it comes to natural, non natural lifters. I would recommend going to a couple legit natural bodybuilding shows. They're, they're a good time, okay? They're a good time. And they, if you're serious about lifting, they really help you gain a perspective of what a true natural is on stage. When you see these guys in person, you'll know the difference between natural bodybuilders and 
non-natural bodybuilders. I also recommend going to a powerlifting meet. If you go to a natural, a legit natural powerlifting meet, and even though there's some people that are trying to cheat the to test and etc., you'll see what naturals are on a strength, you know, from a strength standard standpoint. So this will help you build perspective. Look, it's a lot harder road being a natural. Um, if you get to a 300, 400, 500 pound lift total, 300 bench, 400 pound squat, 500 pound deadlift as a natural, you're doing great. You're doing awesome. That's a great natural strength standard. From a muscle standpoint, if you're 15 to 18% body fat and you get to 17 inch arms, you ain't going to have a lot more you know, size to gain unless you become a bigger natural. You know, some of the, some of the naturals, the big naturals are like, man, I got 19 inch arms. Like, yeah, you weigh 265 pounds, dude, because you got like 35% body fat. That's okay. But what I'm saying is as a lean natural, it's hard to get above a 17 inch arm um, if you just stay the natural course. So I don't want to have some of the bigger guys who have more fat getting alarmist and saying, big hairy ugly dude's an idiot. So I hope that helped. That was kind of a, a, general, a general response to your question. But if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Last question for this video is from Haley. Haley says, as a female, Competing powerlifting in the 60 kg weight class, should I be eating at maintenance during my training um, or bulk or cut? If I bulk and cut, what should I bulk to stay within my weight class? Now, Haley, I'm going to be honest with you here. Um, unless you're competing for records, unless you're competing for national records or world records, I wouldn't be too concerned about weight classes. Here's why. If you eat mostly clean, lean foods, 80 to 90% clean, lean foods, um, or, or clean, whole foods, excuse me, clean, whole foods, things that don't come on a box or a can, vegetables, fruits, meats, you get the, you get the point here. Um, if you eat 80 to 90% of those, and you're eating to about satiety each day, you're not gonna gain a lot of weight. You're, you're gonna stay around the same weight for years and years to come. What you really need to be mostly concerned with is if you come in, like if you're like eight pounds a little bit high for your weight class and you feel like you wanna hit a weight class, you need to learn how to cut weight headed into that meat. Now, that's really the thing you need to master. What I don't want you to do, Haley, is cut or worry about calories too much to the point where it prevents you from building muscle and keeping you from looking better or adding more strength. As a woman, muscle is harder to build. So I don't want you to over-focus on calorie restriction or calorie, you know, keeping within a certain calorie range. I just want you to eat mostly clean, whole foods um, and just focus on that. You're not going to get fat. You might gain a little bit of weight, but that might be muscle and that might be good because that will be good because it'll actually help you pack on more strength. Now, if you are going for nat, uh, national records or world records or you're dead set on keeping within that weight class, then yeah, you're going to have to run a tighter, tighter diet or and or you're going to need to learn how to cut weight headed into a meat. But if you're around the 60 kg class right now in the off season, I wouldn't worry about it. I just eat mostly clean whole foods, see what your body does, relax, enjoy life, and don't worry about if you're gaining a pound or two. If you learn how to cut for a meat, you can get that off in a, in a heartbeat. So Haley, I hope that helped. Um, guys, I hope this video has been of some help. If you have any questions or comments for the big, hairy, ugly dude, there's a Q&A link below. Come on over, post your questions in that Q&A link. I answer every question posted. If you, yes, you have made it this far in this video and have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do. I'd appreciate the support. So, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.